How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number two. In this video series where I show you how to get a leap motion motion sensor to interact with a Raspberry Pi. Now uh, tutorial number one wasn't really a tutorial, it was just showing you what our end result was going to be. Um, and just explaining a few things such as uh, you know how we're going to accomplish it. Well in this video we're going to start by uh, you know creating a new Eclipse project importing the leap library and then we're just gonna do like we're gonna do like the skeleton like kind of like a skeleton coding we're just gonna give our methods names and then we're gonna fill in the codes for each one of those methods later but anyway uh, one thing I'd like to mention we are doing this entire series in Java it is possible to do in Python as well um, well it's possible to do in any of the language that is any of the languages that um, the leap motion library works with but um, Java is the one I'm doing this with, and it's pretty much the same for all the other languages. You just got to do it in that language's equivalent coding. But anyway, why I am on YouTube right now? Um, if you uh, haven't seen my uh, series on uh, the Leap Motion yet with Java, I would suggest going over that first. Um, so you end up on my channel, um, Coding Basics, which you can get to just by uh, going to www.youtube.com/codingbasics. So, coding basics, no spaces or anything. It'll bring you right to here. And then if you go to playlists, these are all my uh, tutorial series that I've been working on. And if you go to my Leap Motion in Java one, there's 11 tutorials here that will, uh, you know, give you a really good background on what we're doing here. These just show you uh, all the different types of data we can get from a Leap Motion motion sensor. And yeah, so check that out if you haven't. It'd probably be some benefit to you. But anyway, let's get started with this tutorial series and let's launch Eclipse. So I'm using Eclipse Kepler for this. Um, doesn't matter which Eclipse version you use. The only thing is you have to have either Java 6 or Java 7 installed on your system. It does not work with Java 8, the Leap Motion Library. So, you know, Java 7 or Java 6 it'll work with. Those are the only two it works with right now. Um, so select your workspace. Um, I have a workspace called Eclipse, and click OK. And once this loads, we're gonna go to File, New, um, and then yeah, Java Project. Now project name you can give it any old name I'm gonna call this one uh, leap uh, PC this is gonna be what's on our PC what we're gonna code here what's on the Raspberry Pi um, we'll we'll code somewhere else but anyway um, underneath the JRE section uh, make sure you have checked off use an execution environment JRE and make sure Java SE 1.7 or 1.6 is selected I do have 1.8, but like I said, it doesn't work. So uh, 1.7 is what we're going to use. And click Next. And then uh, underneath Libraries, we're going to have to add our external jar. Now, uh, you might be lost. When did we download this? If, you have, if you're not sure how to do that, go to this tutorial here, Setting Up Leap Motion with Eclipse. This is the video where I show you, you know, how to download all the Leap Motion drivers, how to download the software development kit, and how to add it to a Leap Motion. Um, or sorry, how to add it to an Eclipse project. So uh, watch that video, pause this one, watch that one, then come back. And what we're going to do now is add an external jar. You want to navigate to where you uh, have the Leap Motion SDK saved. I have this folder on my desktop called Development, which has all my uh, software development kits stored in. So you go into Lib, and we're going to select LeapJava.jar. All right, now we're going to uh, click on this drop-down arrow, highlight the native library location, and click Edit, External Folder, and then. We're going to navigate to that same Leap SDK folder, so uh, development, Leap SDK, lib. Now, uh, there is the 32-bit uh, or 64-bit libraries 
I'm trying to remember. I believe I have a 32-bit version of Eclipse. I can't remember exactly, but anyway, I'm going to select that one. If it's wrong, we can just change that to the 64-bit one. So click OK and click Finish. And here's our Leap Motion project that we're going to be using. So, in click on the Source folder, right-click, New, and Class. And we're going to call this one Leap PC as well. Leap PC, uh, yep, create the public static void main method. That'll save a bit of time. All right, and yep, that's all we need to do. Click Finish. And here is our class. Now, all we're going to do here is just do the skeleton code for all the methods and do all our importing. So this is what we have to import for this to work. So first, import com dot leap motion dot leap and then asterisk import the entire leap library. All right. Next, import com dot leap motion dot leap dot finger with a capital F dot type with a capital T and that will be important later when determining which finger is being pointed at the screen uh, the next thing is we gotta import our gesture states so import com dot leap motion dot leap dot gesture dot state gesture with a capital G state with a capital S alright so that's taking care of all the different uh, stuff I guess you could call it that we need from the leap motion libraries now we're gonna import all the stuff we need for server sockets so, like I mentioned in the first tutorial, how we're going to do this is we're going to have the Leap Motion connected to a PC, MacBook, you know, whatever. Just some computer that's powerful enough to run the Leap Motion motion center because the Raspberry Pi isn't. We're then going to send the information from the Leap Motion to the Raspberry Pi. So, we're going to be using server sockets for that. So, we're going to import java.net. Use an asterisk to import the entire package oops I forgot to put a period after net alright next we're going to import java dot awt dot event dot input event and then import Java dot awt dot event dot key event. All right, and then we're going to import the Java dot io package. So import Java dot io, and then an asterisk. All right. So that takes care of all the stuff we need for getting input and output. Uh, so I just want to see how long this video is. Okay, we're still fine for time. And then next we're going to import the uh, J option pane from the uh, swing package. So import Java X dot swing dot J option pane. And what this is going to do is going to pop off it if it can't uh, connect to the uh, server on our Raspberry Pi. So that's just going to be for error pop-ups. Alright, so now we have everything imported that we're going to need for this entire project. But, now we got to do all of the methods. So, first thing we have to do is make our class extend. So, extends, it'll turn purple because it's a keyword, and then it's going to extend listener. Listener is a class is, that's part of the Leap Motion uh, library. So, um, yeah, it, it, the only way you'll get an error is if you didn't import everything that we needed here. So, it's going to extend our listener. And these are all the methods that we're going to need. 
like I said, we're not going to put all, any code inside the method. We're just going to give our methods names. So public void on connect is the first one. Oops, I spelled that wrong. On connect. And as a parameter, it's going to take a controller. And we're going to call that controller. And controller is also a class part of the leap motion library. So uh, that's going to be the parameter, and that's all we're going to do right now for that method. We'll do the code for the method later. Next, we are going to do the on frame method. So public public void on frame, capital F on frame, and it's also going to take a controller name controller as a parameter. And then, let me just flip to the next page of my notes. Alright, the next thing we're going to create is a method called connect to server. So this is going to be the R method that connects to the server on the Raspberry Pi. So this is going to be a private void. Um, just so you know, there's no outside interference. Uh, so private void, although you could make it a public one doesn't really matter I'm just making it a private one just because I want to so connect to server this is not going to take any parameters and yeah that's all we're going to do for that right now the next one will be the opposite which is disconnect from server so I'm just actually going to copy this just to save a bit of time so disconnect from server that's how you spell disconnect, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Disconnect from server, though, is what we're going to call it. Okay. And then, these are going to be the methods that we are going to use, um, t you know, to send certain types of information from the Leap Motion to the Raspberry Pi. So, first one is going to be update position. So, private void update position. So one thing the leap motion couldn't handle was the uh, 300 frames of data that the um, leap motion sends per second. But it could take um, it could take like coordinates. That's no problem. Getting 300 coordinates per second, that will not be a problem. So we can keep sending coordinates to it to update the cursor position on the screen. Alright, so string position. Um, so we're going to send a string representation of the position that our finger is currently at. So that's our update position method. And then the next one is private void click. So this is the method that we're going to call when uh, we want to click, um, like a mouse click, on our uh, Raspberry Pi. Alright, and that's all we're going to do for that one. It doesn't take any parameters. It'll just send, simply send a command to the leap motion so that it clicks or sorry to the raspberry pi so that it clicks and now we are going to get into uh, um, scrolling up and scrolling down so private void scroll up and then private void scroll down and then the final skeleton method we're going to put in here is our swipe one so whenever we swipe we want to launch the start menu that is what the goal is now keep in mind that some of the uh, distributions that um, we can use for a Raspberry Pi they don't work like it this won't work for them um so uh Raspbian for example the Debian uh Raspberry Pi operating system it doesn't work for this this is the one I was using um but still put it in it's not going to uh, affect your method at all or sorry it's not going to affect your program at all even if your operating system can't do this but I will show you um on Windows uh It'll work though. So basically what we're going to do is whenever we swipe across our motion sensor, we want to launch the start menu. Okay, and yeah, that's the final method. So those are all our skeleton methods. 
next one we're going to get into the coding so that's all I got for you guys this time I'm gonna save this file quickly okay remember leave a comment on this video like this video and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one